I think it's a myth when people think that um, I'm not famous, I'm not rich, I'm not a politician, therefore I have no um, effect on the process. Uh, and then that turns into apathy. Why am I going to vote? My vote doesn't matter. I don't really count. Um, and that's just not true. I think the, the most powerful person in the political process is the citizen. I grew up in a family with uh, a special needs sister. And so that made us a very selfless family to always think of others, to put ourselves in other people's shoes. So I naturally do that in life. Um, I want to know why other communities are suffering more than others. I want to know why uh, there's attack, uh, an attack on women's rights today. I want to know why are we fighting battles we've already won. Um, so it does come from a place inside of me that is a little higher than intellect and it's higher than emotion and it's, it's definitely spiritual. The interesting thing is we live in this amazing country um, and yet we have a large amount of people living below the poverty line. Uh, and for some reason there are people in this country that think they're not our children. Mostly because they're minorities, they're, um, they're people who don't count because they don't vote. Um, and I find that disappointing and sad and um, I think um, if people, if we could humanize the issue more, if we could say these are our children, um, this is why I care so deeply about it because a lot of these people who are living in poverty uh, are of the Latino community and are of the African American community and, um, and I know these families, I've seen these families and I've seen them have to make a choice between putting food on the table or buying medicine for a child with cancer uh, and those choices shouldn't have to be made in families like that so I think um, I think statistics are scary, but you have to put a face to the statistics for people to care. My thoughts on incarceration, uh, interestingly, with minority communities is um, kind of my same thoughts with um, education in this country. There's not a dropout rate, there's a pushout rate. Uh, when it comes to Latino children or African American children or any uh, uh, children who have a lower socioeconomic status. Um, this is the same for incarceration. There's a targeted strategic audience that these laws are being put into place for. It's not going after the bad guy, it's going after a certain person that uh, they want to remove from the political process, that they want to remove from society, uh, or that they want to make money off of and they know this community won't really make any noise about it because it's assumed that um, minority communities should be incarcerated. So, um, you know, my, my thoughts on that run deep um, because it's not conspiracy theory. It is, it is an obvious um, suppression of, of certain communities that are being incarcerated and, and also that um, are being pushed out of, of high school, not, not dropping out. I absolutely think Citizens United is a direct threat to democracy. I think there's not enough people engaged in educating themselves and becoming literate on issues and policies. So when you are saturated, when your life is saturated by ads or saturated by media or saturated by partisan um, channels, whether you're watching Fox or whether you're watching MSNBC, the regurgitation of these ideologies just continue to fester. And so if that's all you're getting, um, without doing your own homework and doing your own research. Um, that's where Citizens United becomes very dangerous, is because you're only going to believe what is fed to you. Corporations allowing special interest groups to uh, somehow backdoor their needs and wants and requests uh, without having to uh, um, be transparent about it is, is very dangerous. And so I'll definitely be on the forefront of of fighting, fighting that.
We're not a special interest group. We're half of the country. So we should be reflected that way in politics. I'm all for uh, women being more involved in politics, running for office. I'm all for writing the check and getting behind them. But I myself am intimidated to ever run for office, so I don't want to be hypocritical in, in, in my statement. Uh, I, I, I can see where it's intimidating because it's still a highly patriarchal process. It's still a, a highly um, male-dominated world where we have to live by the social constructs of um, this gender bias where, you know, we're the, we're the good little ladies. Um, even within politics. Uh, and so I think it's going to take some really strong women to, uh, you know, to, to get in there and, and, and not only run for office, but to have a voice within the process, within, within politics. Women in particular have to compromise so much, so much more than a man. Um, so how do we create that environment where that woman isn't judged by other women for doing what she wants to do? I believe in the concept of creating an arena and in a, sports, a support system for women to be in politics because I don't think it's there. I don't think we have the support. And I think women judge women uh, harder than anybody else. Um, and so is it possible for, for women to uh, engage in politics um, or engage in changing their communities? You want to engage in changing your community. And women do that every day, whether or not they're politicians. So why not do it on a national stage? My prayer in which I meditate on for myself, which I hope that everybody could answer these questions for themselves, is, is to ask yourself every day, who am I? What are my desires? And what is my purpose in life? And for everybody to have uh, the answers to those questions. And they may change from time to time and day to day. But if you constantly center yourself with who am I and what's my purpose in life, um, I think things become very clear. So that's my wish and prayer for the world.